this is my presentation uh, of additional testing in antiphospholipid syndrome, a role of known criteria in antiphospholipid antibodies. This is my disclosures. Okay, when you check for the presence of antiphospholipid antibodies, you can uh, have this kind of uh, antiphospholipid profiles. You can have everything positive, lupus anticoagulant, anticardiolipin, and anti-beta-2 GP1, double positivity with negative luck, lupus anticoagulant, or single positive test. You, uh, uh, this is what usually is found when you check for antiphospholipid antibodies. It is important that the anticardiolipin anti-beta-2 are of the same isotype uh, because they explore the same antigen that is beta-2 GP1. Uh, it is important to confirm the, the profile after 12 weeks, uh, as we know, but what happened is that uh, triple positivity after 12 weeks is always confirmed. Uh, in many cases, most cases is confirmed also double positivity, but single positivity is confirmed only in less than 50% of cases. Another important consideration to be done here is that uh, you have the uh, rate of um, uh, thrombosis. Uh, here, you, I mean, this is slide of normal subject that is less than around 0.5 per 100 patient here. Then you have the uh, 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 incidence of thrombosis in carriers of single positivity, that is around 1.5 uh, uh, per 100 patient here, and the carrier of triple positivity that is very high, as it is high for the APS, thrombotic APS patients. What I want to say with this slide is that different profile uh, means different possibility that this patient have thrombo thrombosis uh, in the future or a current thrombotic event if they are APS patients. So if we have a full profile like here, triple positivity, uh, positive all the three tests, but you have also positivity in anti-PSPT, that is the new test uh, that I, I would like to introduce in the diagnosis of antiphospholipid syndrome. You have a tetra-positive patient with everything positive. The diagnostic value here is very high. Uh, do we need to add uh, anti-PSPT in triple positive patient? Well, uh, uh, we could, uh, we can, uh, add this test if you are not sure uh, that lupus anticoagulant is positive, because in my view, anti-PSPT is the real uh, antibody that promotes the lupus anticoagulant activity, and I'll show you why. We have studied several patients with the tetra-positive patients, uh, 14 in this paper, and what we did in this tetra-positive patient, we took the plasma of this patient and we passed the plasma through a beta-2 GP1 column. And uh, so we eluted the uh, anti-beta-2 GP1 antibodies and all the, uh, all the anti-PSPT antibodies were in the flow through of the affinity column for beta-2 GP1. Uh, but if you take uh, the eluate from the beta-2 GP1 affinity column, in other words, if you get from this column the anti-beta-2 GP1 antibodies and you check for the DRVVT ratio, there is no or mild, very weak prolongation of the coagulation time. And uh, this means that... Uh, uh, the anti-beta-2 GP1 in this system has a very low anticoagulant activity, while the flow-through of the column, where the anti-PSPT are present, have a very high activity, lupus anticoagulant activity. We further go on doing what? 
taking the flow through where the lupus anticoagulant is present, uh, putting this flow through into a prothrombin column and diluting the anti-PSPT antibody. So we got affinity purified anti-PSPT antibodies. And we checked these antibodies in a, a, a thrombin generation assay. And what we found is, uh, as you can see here, we have three colors. Uh, we have a, a, a blue color that is a normal pooled plasma. We have the green color that is a normal pooled plasma plus anti beta 2 GP1 antibodies, affinity purified. And the, the red line is a normal pooled plasma plus anti PSPT purified antibodies. And as you can see here, we confirm that the anticoagulant activity is uh, most is important for anti-PSPT. And it, as you have a, a very long lag phase, it is comparable with the anticoagulant activity. And uh, while the anti-beta-2 GP1, the green line has a, a weak anticoagulant activity with respect to vehicle, to, to the buffer. Okay. So these anti-beta-2, anti-PSPT antibodies are real uh, lupus anticoagulant antibodies in, in our view. So when you have a, a, a patient with antiphospholipid syndrome and uh, venous thromboembolism, you treat this patient uh, initially uh, with full dose or low molecular weight heparin uh, uh, and then you use VKA and not DOAX in triple positive patient, because we, we will see in another presentation that this, this is not the case. The intensity of treatment should be between two and three of INR, because we have two randomized clinical trials saying that. And the duration of anticoagulant treatment, generally long-term in triple positive patients. But when we have a patient uh, 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 at the time of uh, uh, the diagnosis of venous thromboembolism, the patient in the, the emergency room or if it is in an ambulatory and the diagnosis of VTE is made, usually you, the patient receives soon anticoagulant treatment, uh, even before the diagnosis sometime in the uh, suspicion of VTE. And uh, testing in this case, testing uh, for lupus anticoagulant uh, is, is difficult because uh, if you check lupus anticoagulant in a patient uh, treated with uh, low molecular weight heparin or, uh, or anticoagulants, uh, you have probably false positive res results. So the possible solution in this patient is to check for, to check for uh, lupus anticoagulant when you have the patient on uh, low molecular weight or uh, anticoagulant drug is to run a type and heckering tests. This is currently be studied, studied or use the dog stop the carbon material to absorb the anticoagulants. But my approach till we are waiting for this new uh, test for, uh, for the patient uh, on uh, anticoagulants uh, for the, for the, to detect the lupus anticoagulant activity. If I have a young patient presenting with uh, uh, venous thromboembolism, uh, 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 no unprovoked or provoked by mild risk factor as the pill, for instance, or uh, contraceptives, and treated with anticoagulants. And I would like to know uh, soon if the patient has lupus anticoagulant activity, uh, deciding if this patient is triple positive, so, I, uh, so a very high risk patient. I check this patient first for anticardiolipin, anti-beta-2, GP1 antibodies, 
because these uh, tests are not influenced by the presence of, anti uh, of anticoagulants. If the, these tests are negative, then uh, maybe I can treat also the patient with DOAX, it's feasible. If the, this uh, anti-beta-2 and anti-cardiolipine is positive, it, the patient might be triple positive. So I would like to test this patient for anti-PSPT antibodies, and if it's positive, treat the patient with uh, warfarin. But uh, this, uh, the test uh, I would like to add to the armamentarium for the diagnosis of antiphospholipid syndrome, uh, uh, anti-domain one, the, the part of the beta-2 GP1 that is important for the, uh, for the syndrome, and the antiphospholipid prothrombin antibodies. This, uh, uh, now these two tests uh, uh, are not uh, are excluded, eliminated for those uh, uh, used for the diagnosis of anti PS or antiphospholipid syndrome. Uh, anti PSPT uh, uh, possess, as I have shown to you, lupus anticoagulant activity. So they are very useful to confirm or exclude the presence of lupus anticoagulant in your patient. And this is crucial because sometimes lupus anticoagulant may, may be false positive, but also may be false negative. Uh, and you know that may be false positive when, when the, the test is reported as weak or borderline, and this often happens. Uh, if there is the presence of anticoagulant in testing plasma, as, as uh, I've shown to you before, uh, and uh, if uh, it is present, uh, the presence of antibodies to specific anticoagulation factors, for instance, anti-factor 8 or anti-factor 5, if, uh, uh, and we know that the isolated lupus anticoagulant is confirmed after 12 weeks in less than 50% of cases. Also, maybe false negative, why? Because there is a, a reagent with the, the concentration of phospholipids high and is not sensitive to to the lupus anticoagulant or because there is the presence of lupus cofactor, a factor that is uh, pr that prolong the, the coagulation times in the testing for lupus anticoagulant only in the mixing test. So if you have a patient like a, a young woman with a uh, with uh, um, uh, transient ischemic attacks and moderate level of anticardiolipine, anti beta 2 GP1 antibodies, but negative for lupus anticoagulant, I would really now uh, uh, like to know if my patient is uh, uh, anti domain 1 positive, if this anti beta 2 GP1 are anti domain 1. And as you can see, in the uh, left uh, figure, uh, par only part of these patients uh, double positive are anti-domain one positive. And I would like also to confirm if my lupus anticoagulant is really negative. And in, in, this is the case in this study we did because all the anti-PSPT in double positive patients were uh, negative. So these are uh, important tool to decide which kind of patient you have in front of you. And also, if you have isolated lupus anticoagulant, the same story, you have to check if this is a, a real or is a false positive lupus anticoagulant, because this is very important for for the treatment of these patients. So in 25 patients with the true isolated lupus anticoagulant, all of them were positive for anti-PSPT antibodies. So we have confirmed that that lupus anticoagulant was real. So to conclude my part uh, with this talk, I would like to show you this slide. 
that uh, in which I have uh, gathered my uh, thinking on on uh, how to the, to use these new tests in uh, the diagnosis of uh, antiphospholipid antibodies. Uh, indeed, uh, if you, you have a, a patient positive for all the four tests, the tetra positive patients, maybe anti PSPT. Uh, uh, no, maybe you don't have to check for any other test because you have everything positive, the patient is there, and so forth. The, if you have a triple positive patient and you have some doubt on, uh, on a lupus anticoagulant that may be borderline or false positive, you, you can use the anti-PSPT and confirm if the, your patient is a tetra positive patient, uh, if uh, uh, LA is a weak or uncertain or borderline. <clears throat> In the case of uh, double positive patients, I, uh, as I sh have shown to you before, uh, uh, I, I would like to know if my patient uh, if the anti beta 2 GP1 are anti domain 1, because uh, my, my strategies in treatment, this patient may change. Uh, for instance, I can change from anti platelet to anti coagulants in a patient with uh, uh, ischemic, uh, transient ischemic attack. And I also want to know if the Lupus anticoagulant is real negative doing anti PSPT antibodies. As far as uh, single positivity is concerned, uh, uh, also here I would like to check for anti PSPT just to, to know we, uh, what is the lupus anticoagulant I am looking at. And uh, I would like to follow up my patient also checking for anti beta 2 and especially for anti-domain one. And if you have a, a single positive uh, anti-cardiolipin, uh, I only follow up with this patient because a single anti-cardiolipin is not an anti-beta-2 and uh, is a, an antibody uh, directed to other uh, protein. And we have studied this and we know there are other protein for, for which anticardiolipin become positive. Uh, for instance, uh, complement C4 uh, and other proteins. So uh, for single anticardiolipin, uh, just follow your patient. Uh, for single positivity in anti-beta-2 GP1, I would like to know which kind of antibody is this because we have the experience that in this case, possibly, probably, the antibodies are not directed to anti-domain one, but are directed to anti-domain four, five of the protein. And this is associated not with thrombosis, but with other, uh, uh, with infection, for instance. And so it is another story. So I would like in this case to have both anti-domain one and anti-domain four or five. Uh, let me thank the collaborators in my uh, lab, uh, Gentian Denas, Elisa Bison, Elena Pontara, Maria Grazia Cattini, Chung Yang Cheng, Sina Padayatil, Jose, Giacomo Zoppellaro, Alessandra Banzato. Without the help of these people, uh, I would like uh, I we, uh, will show you no results today. So thanks to them very much. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I am open to for questions.